Thank you for the introduction. Um, I will try to beat the clock. Um, firstly, to introduce myself, I want to tell you a bit of a story. Uh, we've had a number of people mention they come from outside the wash area. I'm actually a botanist by background, so I reckon that's one further than the animals that we had this morning. Um, but I've spent 25 years of my working life building and designing organic waste treatment plants for um, the Western world, so mostly commercial scale in vessel composting, 20,000 tonne a time jobs, uh, more latterly anaerobic digestion. Um, and these, these, this work took me into travel to uh, a number of uh, countries such as India, Thailand and, and Africa. And I really want to give you an account of, of how the story began from my point of view. Um, and, and not just sitting um, working, but sometimes I watch telly. And for those of you who are not familiar with the UK telly, a gentleman by the name of Lenny Henry, who was a comedian, um, had a life-changing experience for him because he was embedded back to Kibera, uh, in, in, into um, a, a family of orphans in Kibera for a considerable period of time. And it, it, it made pretty compelling television. And the reason I've used it today is, A, because it was perhaps the catalyst for the start of my journey to what I'm trying to do now, but it was also a catalyst for him. But this phrase that I picked out that was used, um, to me is as good as the statistics. The words, as I acclimatised to the stench, he then goes into the coughing, and especially for young children when no sanitation exists. So that really puts it in a nutshell for me. So um, the outcome of Lenny's experiences was that it moved me eventually out of uh, finding solutions for the wastes of the West, as I call it, and trying to vote, motivate me and others to find a solution to really stop sewage, sewage being a health hazard. And this is the story of the outcome. So we have a new tool, um, as, as my colleague said, in partnership with, with Butar Products, for um, trying to tackle the problem of organic waste management in low-income countries. And I come from a background which is botany. I'm interested in the soil. As far as I'm concerned, organic waste isn't just sewage. It's also food waste. It's also animal manures. Um, but we have to get these raw materials back on the land or we have no agriculture. And I want to introduce you to the three B's of FlexiGester, as I call it. The first B is pretty much what WASH is about. It's about getting the poo out of the community. So the FlexiGester is a butyl rubber bag. It's connected directly to the latrine, to poor flush latrines usually. So the sewage is immediately isolated from the environment. And that butyl rubber bag is anaerobic, it's, it doesn't have any gas exchange, and it's uh, sealed. So in one starting move, we have removed the sewage from all of those vectors, those mozzies that we've been hearing about in, in detail, and I've certainly learned a lot this morning about, about the mozzies. Um, so the first task in the three Bs of FlexiGester is basically to, to bag it, to isolate it from the community. But to me, isolating it from the community isn't solving the problem because eventually it's going to come back out. If it's a pit latrine, you've got to empty the pit. And then where does it go? So the next B is to break it down. So the, the flexible butyl bag is, it, is an anaerobic digester. And as a consequence of putting the, 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 the waste materials into this bag is that it immediately starts to decompose. Fortunately, nature does it for us. We don't have to inoculate it with anything. Natural microorganisms will, will develop and will start to break down that waste. One of the impacts of that natural breakdown process is pathogen reduction. As, as we were discussing, it's not the poo, it's what's in the poo. So first of all, by bagging it, we stop things getting in, but obviously enteric materials will come through. By breaking it down in an anaerobic environment, pathogens are reduced. And various people have published data, such as Avery et al. in last, uh, last year, looking specifically at anaerobic digestion as a means of pathogen reduction um, of, of um, uh, human um, <coughs> disease threats. But the final B that I'm wanting to tell you about is let's benefit from it. Okay? If we can't find a way to make poo pay, we're going to struggle to make it happen. 
And the beauty of anaerobic digestion is that it does give us something that can help with that task. Biogas comes off a dirty pond, um, a, a sludge lagoon, a lagoon of human sewage in the middle of Dar es Salaam is making biogas. It just happens. But if you contain that biogas, you then have a material that can start to work towards substituting for charcoal and for wood fuel. And if, if you know, the wash sector doesn't normally think about charcoal, why should it? But it will probably be the single biggest factor that will drive sanitation because the cost of charcoal <laughs> in these communities is enormous. And I'll mention that again in a minute. The other thing, of course, is that you've now treated and broken down the waste and so you get this biofertilizer we've had it alluded to before we had it alluded to in the pee presentation this material belongs back on the land um, and uh, it, you know if anyone's interested we've been doing a bit of research on the chemical the value of the nutrients as chemical fertilizers contained in sewage and you come up with some very big numbers and bearing in mind that everywhere in africa is dependent on imported fertilizer most farmers in Africa can't afford any fertilizer. What fertilizer there is, is usually provided by government on subsidized programs and used for political ends. So if we're looking at food production, we need those resources back on the land and it needs to be monetized. But that is a long-term game plan. So a few photographs just to illustrate what I'm talking about. Um, this is the first flex suggest that we built. It's on an orphanage in Malawi. Poor flush latrines uh, are visible in, in, the, in the brick building. The liquids come straight out into the flexi gesture that you can see here in the foreground. The gas is coming off that, straight into bags. We pick those bags up, we take them to the kitchens. It's taken out of that giant Calagas bottle, for want of a better expression, and into a modified rocket fuel cooker. So, We've taken the waste, we've sealed it from the environment, we've treated it, and we've, we've got a beneficial outcome from the, from the gas that's coming off it. This one is in, in Sierra Leone. It's in a Young Offenders Institute, and I particularly put this photograph in because this shows the entire structure arriving in a box in the back of a car. So that's how it comes um, from us. So transport makes it... Its ease of transport makes it possible to consider it for obviously rapid deployment requirements when you have a, a flood or something and you need to get sanitation into the community. No concrete's involved in the erection of it. It's a digger trench, line the trench with a protective geotextile to protect the rubber from getting punctured with a stone, um, and, and then start filling it. Final illustration um, for you is Dar es Salaam. This one is um, uh, particularly exciting from my point of view because this is a peri-urban area. These lagoons that you can see in front of you are full of poo. They are the dumping ground for the septic tanks that are emptied in the community. These are for the people who have septic tanks. It may interest you to also know that all the people living around them do not have septic tanks. So they are living next to the poo ponds for the rich. And in the University of uh, Cambridge have a student outreach program, and they have developed a low-cost sanitation system where they pull together two to 300 houses, <coughs> or thereabouts at a time, into a shallow trench piped collection system. Prior to hooking up with ourselves, their ambition was to get it from the buildings into the ponds. Now what we're doing is we've got um, a much larger digest than the previous ones, the 40 cubic metre one, I don't know if the slide will really show it, but that trench is a lot bigger than the other trench. <coughs> Digester intercepts that output from those communities, makes the gas, and we're trying to develop a micro uh, entrepreneurial uh, model for distributing that gas back into that community as a cooking fuel. Would anyone like to hazard a guess what a family in that community there pays per month in dollars um, for, for charcoal? Nobody's going to guess. 60. That's a heck of a lot of money. It's the second biggest source of expenditure in those communities of, after food. And where does that charcoal come from? Well, you can bet your bottom dollar it doesn't come from where they're living. And, you know, where's it going to come from in 10 years' time? 
So that's why I allude to the fact that charcoal is probably going to be one of our biggest drivers, because if somebody's making a living taking the gas off that, and that, that bag there should generate about 20 cubic metres of gas a day when it's in operation fully, um, then that's clearly going to, to contribute to solving that problem. It won't do it all. Um, just a slide, really, to allude to the pathogen reduction challenge that we all have, because if we want to use this stuff, we do not want it to become the source of the spread um, of, of other diseases, helmets or anything else. So we are actively looking at a multifactorial approach, a multi-barrier multi approach um, to pathogen, pathogen reduction. And this photo in the top right there illustrates small bore tubing through which we pass the digestate, where it gets the solar gain, five. And um, uh, so it warms up, elevated temperature, um, in, you know, can, can take down the pathogen loading. Um, that's just one of, of the approaches. We're also looking at some other chemical ones. So in summary, it's about making sewage capture, treatment, and reuse more accessible. Um, it's low cost. Bricks um, uh, can be competitive with bricks and mortar. We have got some comparative costings for Uganda. Um, transportable by plane, rapidly deployed, all these things I've said. It can also be scaled. <coughs> brick, brick and mortar digesters tend to be quite difficult to do, much above about 5 to 10 cubic metres. That's a 40 cubic metre one. We've got an 80 cubic metre one going out to Ethiopia. Um, and we need to be able to tackle the problem at the scale in which it exists. And last but not least... We hope we will be able to demonstrate as the story develops that we can generate an income from the people using it and thereby start to start to make the whole thing uh, self-sustaining. So thank you for listening. And just to check that you were, can anyone remember what any of the Bs were? First B. <laughs> yep. Second B. Yeah. And third B. Magic. You were awake. Thank you. <laughs>